Hi folks, this is Bob Warfield with a video that's part of our GWizard University series of training videos. In this video we'll take a quick look at uh, GWizard Calculator, just give a quick introduction and walk through of the basics for the calculator. We're going to show you what applications are available, uh, the basic screen elements, how to navigate between applications, and how to configure GWizard for your machine tool. So let's dig in. Up at the top of the screen you'll find what we call the login bar. When you get GWizard installed, uh, click the login button and give it the email you use to register or subscribe to the software and it will log you in. There are some other uh, handy goodies here besides just a login. For example, if I click getting started, uh, it brings up the web page that's getting started for this product. And that's really the, the beginning web page for all the online documentation. Uh, so that's handy to know. If you're not getting that when you click getting started, you've probably got a pop-up blocker uh, configured on your system. Another handy thing to know about is the, the help menu at the top of all the different CNC cookbook pages. This is our GWizard help desk and it's got all sorts of handy resources for you where you can download, uh, how to get support, uh, troubleshooting guides, all the good stuff is here. So that's another one to keep in mind. Okay, below the login bar we have our app navigator bar for getting between the different applications. GWizard Calculator comes up on the Feeds and Speeds application to start with because that's where you'll spend most of your time. But we have a number of other applications too, so let's just kind of run through them real quick and see what's there. We have a real quick and easy scientific calculator. does a number of cool things. Uh, unit conversions, fractions, uh, time numbers, and calculations and degrees, minutes and seconds, uh, trigonometry functions and your advanced scientific stuff. So really handy to have that and if you click this little button you can even tear it off and have it sitting in the corner of your screen uh, where it's handy for calculations while you're on other pages. Our CAD CAM wizards are a really cool and unique feature to GWizard that are designed to give you optimum answers for your CAM software uh, the different machining operations without requiring you to give it much information. Uh, for example, to do a pocket we need to know what machine, what material, the pocket depth, and the corner radius. And from that uh, we'll figure out the optimal uh, information that you need to know for your CAM program in terms of feeds and speeds, uh, cut depth, cut width, all of that good stuff. Uh, so really cool and helpful thing to have. Here's the feeds and speeds calculator. Um, this is probably what most people come to GWizard for. And I, the only thing I'm going to say about that here, we'll do a more in-depth video on it uh, in advance, is you basically work your way left to right, top to bottom, right? And when you filled in the basic information getting down to your feeds row here, uh, you'll have an RPM and a feed rate and a plunge feed rate. Uh, the rest of this is informative information, it's additional uh, settings you can modify, and it's helpful stuff. Uh, but the basics are really this part of the screen on down. Geometry. The geometry application has a bunch of handy ge geometry calculators. So trig calculators, uh, bolt circles, dovetails, tapers, uh, camphor drill operations, you know, these various drills have tips on them and depending on how deep you go, you know, that's going to cover the actual size of the camphor or the depth or whatever. You can figure that all out. Uh, chord calculator, true position, uh, point calculator, uh, even a Turner's Cube designer and some fits and tolerances are here. Uh, so lots of useful geometry calculations. Uh, there's a thread database that has unified and ISO threads as well as NPT pipe threads. Uh, a quick references uh, guide. It's got a drill chart, a fastener database, weights and volumes, thermal calculator, uh, electrical including uh, resistor color codes, uh, CNC motor calculations, GNM codes, hardness cross reference, a rigidity calculator, uh, a chatter calculator to help you minimize the the chatter by picking the right spindle RPM uh, and a notebook where you can you can bookmark various web pages you want to have available for your reference. Uh, lots of good stuff under quick references. 
The last tab is the setup tab. There are a number of different things that can be set up for GWizard. Uh, we're only going to cover the basics here, but there's also a tool crib capability where you manage tool tables. Uh, it'll tell you the locations of the files used by the software, uh, some integration with some other software, uh, other, other types of information, uh, and an about page. It sort of tells you the current status of your subscription, for example. You know, this is my account. I'm a gold member. I have a lifetime uh, subscription, naturally and so that information is here. Let's go back to basics. There are a couple of things you want to set up almost as soon as you get the program installed and one is going to be what units you want to be in, uh, Imperial or Metric, and the other is your basic machine profile. What you want to do here is find a machine that's relatively similar to your machine. We have a few predefined machines here uh, that we can start with. Uh, but find a machine that's kind of similar to your machine, uh, select it, go in here, and then modify it to fit your machine's capabilities exactly. Uh, GWizard uses a lot of this information in the calculator and all of it in the editor uh, in order to do its job. And so you'll want to give a name to your machine, to specify is it a mill or a lathe? People ask me all the time, does your does your software do lathe stuff? And they don't see any lathe stuff going on. And it, yeah, it does. You just have to select one of the lathes, and you'll see all the lathe features get enabled. Uh, you give the make and the model. This is your different spindle tapers and their size. Your spindles max and min RPM. Uh, your spindle horsepower, which may be adjusted. Uh, in a couple of ways that are handy. Uh, number one, if you have a really small machine, say a Sherline or a TAG or one of the small SIEGs, uh, you may want to run the weight adjustment which accounts for the lower rigidity of these machines and will do uh, gentler cuts as a result. Uh, most machines, if you have the information available on the spindle power curve, you want to go ahead and give that to us here so we can compensate for the fact that you don't have your maximum power at every RPM, uh, GWizard will take that into account and do the right thing adjusting the, uh, the spindle power curve. Uh, zero to max RPM time, that's really more for GWizard Editor. Uh, this gives you an ability to derate your spindle speed, so whatever uh, the feeds and speeds recommends will be multiplied by this percentage your maximum feed rate, maximum rapids, your travels, your acceleration, your machine's rate. Uh, there's an hourly rate calculator that's used by our CAD CAM estimator program uh, that's pretty handy. Uh, this is an adjustment for GWizard Editor simulation time. Uh, tool changer slots in time are really more for uh, uh, GWizard Editor. Tool life calculator, if you did uh, uh, derate to say 80 percent speed, you'll notice that for carbide tools that increases your tool life nearly 2x. Uh, so if you're really trying to maximize your tool life, that's handy to know. Um, you can do the same thing. You can derate the chip load, uh, tell us your coolant on-off time, your coolant options, and your minimum word time. So go through your machine's documentation or the spec sheets uh, for the machine to find this information out. And when you get it all keyed in, be sure to hit save so that it's saved. And then when you go into the various applications, your machine will now be on the list and you can pick it out and use it uh, to do your feeds and speeds and other calculations. Okay, that's been our uh, introduction and walkthrough video. There'll be other videos that show you uh, in detail how these different things work, but that, that's going to get you started right there. Thanks very much.